Hey everyone, this is Baylor, and so in this video, we are going to look at adding our GraphQL schema. So what we'll do first is we have our API and our data project. We're going to add our schema to another project, and this will allow us to very easily move the schema around, and that is very crucial to having a wonderful solution. So what we'll do is we're going to add a new project, and I'm going to change the path to be in the source directory since I do prefer my solutions to have a separated source directory for projects. And we're going to make it C Sharp with Net Standard 2.0, and we're going to change this project name to just be Schema. Very cool. And so now that we have this this project, we're going to go through first of all and just delete this class one. We don't need it, and it just takes up space, which is very important since I'm on a laptop with our big hard drive. So what I'm going to do is take this schema project. I'm going to add a reference back to the data project so that we'll have access to our context and things of that nature. I'm also going to go into our API project. I'm going to add a reference to schema, and it thinks it's already added, but that is not true. So now we have all of these references, and what we're going to do is inside of the schema project, we're going to add a reference to the GraphQL NuGet package, and you're going to want to make sure that you can view the pre-releases of these because we're going to want to take the 2.0 alpha. I know it sounds alpha, but it's good, and it's worth it. It adds features that we will want. So now that we have that, what we'll do is we're going to add a class we're going to call this our bicycle shop schema. And we're going to have this inherit from schema. And that is not correct. It We're going to have to use this GraphQL.types.schema. What we're going to do is very simply, we're going to add a constructor to our bicycle shop schema. It's going to take in an instance of I dependency resolver. And we're going to get in that resolver. And we're going to pass that up to the GraphQL schema. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll say we have a query. It's going to be equal to resolver.resolve, and we're going to say query type. So what we're doing here, this is all part of GraphQL 2.0, this I dependency resolver. Basically, it gives us a ton of flexibility as to how are we going to um, have dependency injection throughout our GraphQL objects. And so if you look at the source, there's two or three of these. Um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. All we care about is that we have some way to resolve an object based off of its type. And so what we'll do is we're going to add this query type. So we'll just go back to our schema, add class, query type. And we're going to tell this in here from object graph type. And this class takes in a generic type, but we're not, we don't care about that right now because the query type is the root of our GraphQL queries. But we, so we do even need a constructor for query type. The practice here is when you define an object in GraphQL that you always add a suffix of type. And that way, when you're looking through your code and you see query type, that you'll know immediately this is a GraphQL object type. But when you present this query type down to the user through the GraphQL library, through the GraphQL schema, you're going to want to change that name and just make it query. And so that's the practice here, and it has to be done by hand, but it's something you'll just find fun and enjoyable like I have. And so what we'll do is we're going to define a very simple field here. Fields can take in, if you have a generic, they can use Lambda expressions to, to resolve them. In this case, since we don't, we'll have to type this in. We're going to make a really simple one that's a string graph type. And to resolve this, we're, we're going to say, first of all, we'll define a name of this, and it'll be a message. And then we'll say that the resolve function of this, this gives us a context, which we'll look at later. But what we really care about here is we're just going to return a message, right? And this message has to be a string, because that's what we've told this field to be. And so what we'll do is we'll say, hello from GraphQL, exclamation mark. And what we'll also do, this by default is nullable. And so what we can do is we can wrap this and say this is a non-null graph type. And what will happen is when GraphQL in our .NET project builds this schema, it's going to start with our schema type. It's going to say this has your query type. It's going to go into query type. It's going to say query has a name of query. It has a field of message. 
and it's a string type that can't be null. And what would happen here is if we actually tried to return null, GraphQL would break because, and it's not breaking here, it just looks like it's breaking. There we go, that's correct. The problem, it'll, it'll break because we're actually going against what we define in our schema. And so it's important to always test your GraphQL objects. 